example one of the Society of Fire Protection Engineers uh, manual on human behavior in fires. What it is, is it's one large room, there are two exits, and the occupants then have to walk down a flight of stairs to a landing. Uh, there's 300 occupants, and uh, the farthest the person has to walk is 200 feet. Pathfinder up. The first thing we'll do is we'll click on EN to make sure we're working in English units. We'll click View, Edit Snap Grid, and we want the grid spacing to be at 10 feet. We hit OK. We'll go to the top view. This is the sketching view. Now in this case it will be actually easier for us to just type in the coordinates of the room. So I'm going to click on the room tool. For the Z coordinate of the room, we'll put in 26.843. Now that was selected in this case to exactly match the 7 by 11 slope of the stairwell, of the stairs. And we'll type in the coordinates of the room. It goes from 0, 0, the room is 200 feet long and 30 feet uh, wide. And so we'll create the room. And now we'll go back to our selection tool and we'll zoom out and there is our room. Now we're going to add the landing. So I'll click add rectangular. And this landing is at zero feet in the z direction. And again, I will just type in some coordinates here because that's easiest. It'll go from 240, uh, 0, to 250, and 30. So what we've done is we've added a little room there. Now, let us, well, just for fun, let's go ahead and, and use the selection tool. And let's type this and label this as the landing so that we know that that is the room uh, when the people get to the landing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the stairs. So we'll click the stair tool between the two edges dialog. Into the stair width we will type 44 inches. This is matting the value specified in the problem. In the door one width box, we'll type 32 inches. And in the door two width, we'll also type 32 inches. So the doors in the entrance to the stairs are smaller than the actual uh, stair widths. And the tread is a 7 to 11, as already talked about. And so we will go ahead now and create this. So we'll move the cursor to the position. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And so now I'm going to create the stair. And so what I will do is I will move the cursor to the position 200 and y is equal to 20 and I'll click and then I will click a second time on the landing and that adds the stairs. Let's go ahead and label this one. This will be called the left stair, so I'll call that stair left. And now let's add the second stair and it will go from the same location. I will hit the shift key to shift it down and then I do a second click and now I have my second stairs and this will be labeled stair right. Okay, so now let's just look at this. Let's just see what we really have here. Let's reset. Let's go back to our 3D view. Make sure we can see everything in the 3D view. And so you can see we have now a, a set of two stairs leading down from the room to the landing. Now we're going to add an exit door to the stairs. And so what we'll do is we'll add the door along this entire width. So I'm just going to click Add Door. And I'll just click and drag along that width. And that will now be the exit. Let's just label this Exit. Now we're ready to add the occupants. And we're, there's 300 randomly spaced occupants. 
I can either work in the 3D view, or I always can go back and work in the 2D view if I want. I'll just uh, work in the 3D view. I'll use the selection cursor. I'll select this room. I'll do a right click, and I'll say Add Occupants. And what we will do is we'll have them randomly distributed, and there will be 300 occupants in the room. We hit OK, and there are the there are our occupants now uh, in this room and so we can look at them and get ready to go. Now the only thing we have to do next is do the simulation and this will be the SFPE simulation so I'm going to select the SFPE behavior and it's going to be a pure SFPE simulation and you'll see the results of that calculation. I now hit run and the first thing it will do is it will ask me to save this. It's now running You can watch how the occupants, uh, you can watch the count as the occupants leave the room. And at the end of the simulation, the 3D display is brought up. Now we have the 3D representation of the results. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Let's change the agents to people. So now we can see the model. Uh, we see the people in their original locations. Let's go ahead and start to display the results. And you will see that this is how the SFPE mode works. In the SFPE mode, their people are allowed to occupy the same space, and what controls the flow is both the density, so that controls the speed of the people walking through the room, and each door there is a certain flow rate that is allowed through the door. So people are accumulating at the door here. They're actually all occupying the same queue at the door and then they get released at the appropriate rate out of the door. And they then walk down the stairs and walk out of the building. Now this result the calculated result with Pathfinder is exactly the properly calculated result for SFPE. To do is we're going to move up one modest step from the basic SFPE calculation and I'm going to go to the simulation parameters and I'm going to select collision handling. All of the SFPE rules still hold true except now the occupants will not be allowed to occupy the same space and so they will uh, form true cues at the door. So we hit OK and I hit Run. So now we can watch the results of the SFPE calculation with collision handling added and now you can see the cues are forming at the, the exits so the people do not occupy the same space and so we form this, we see this grouping behavior but still the SFPE rules are being formed in, followed in that the people can only flow through the door at the SFPE specified rate. It turns out that the total calculated time is not significantly changed by this queue forming behavior. The final modification to the behaviors will go to the simulation parameters and now we will select steering behavior and at this point now all the SFPE rules for flow rates through doors, down stairways, as a function of speed, as a function of density are all removed and the agents act as individual uh, agents each with their goals and trying to get out of the room and follow their path out as best they can. So now we view the results of the steering behaviors and so now these people are all acting as independent agents and so we do not have the restriction on flow rate through the doors and down the stairs and you can see that in this simulation the people actually walk a little bit faster through the doors and it turns out the total time to exit the room and exit all the way down through the stairs was 159 seconds for this steering behavior 
whereas it was 241 seconds for the SFPE model.